In this course, you'll learn to paint the rich eye of this tiger, in addition to the surrounding textures and fur. First, I'll create a map of the prominent lines and shapes that can be seen in and around the eye. And this will serve as a guide as we apply further layers of color. It will help to keep me from getting lost. Let's move into the color in the iris. This is the underpainting, the lightest values that we can see. We've got the underpainting in place. And now I'll continue to apply layers of color, slowly going darker in value. I'll reinforce these tiny hairs around the edge. There's just a bit of color on the brush. That's dry already, and I'll lay in a layer of gray, taking the shape a little bit darker. Pull the color right into those hairs that you just created. And I'll gently go over this dark shape. Do you see how little by little, layer by layer, we're going darker in value? I can make better decisions about what to do in the iris after the surrounding color has been established. So let's move into the color around the eye. And I'll begin down here, starting with the lightest value. I'll lay the color in the center first and pull it and guide it where I'd like it to go. Do you see how pale this is? So what I'm doing is working around the lightest shapes. And I'm using the photo as a guide, not perfectly copying what I'm seeing, but looking at the direction of the hairs and working around lighter fur and lighter shapes. This is dry, so let's go ahead and move into the next layer of color. When this dries, it will be ready for hairs. I think it's time to give attention to this shape again. What I'm aiming for is a slightly lighter value in the center of the shape and darker along the edges. Just by manipulating the values, we can create interest and that realistic look. I'm using a gentle touch, barely touching the brush to the paper. This glaze is taking the shape a little bit darker, and you can still see all of the different values and textures through this thin application of color. This is dry, and in the next lesson, we'll create the fur. Our first layer will be an application of pale hairs. So look at the lightest color that you can see. In this first layer, I'm giving attention to the curve or the contour of the hairs, and I'll use that as a map as we go darker in value. This is beginning to appear a little rough, but we've got glazes coming that will slightly smooth and unify everything. I'm happy with what's going on in the fur, and it's time for a glaze. And I'll use this first application to take some areas slightly darker. Moving lower, 
If you're happy with the values and the color and just want to smooth textures, you could use plain water. When this is dry, we'll make decisions about what to do next. You might want to go back in and smooth with water again, or you might want to use a glaze to adjust color or value. And now that these colors are in place, I can make decisions about what to do in the iris. This is dry, and I'll move into the darker textures and lines. I'm touching in dots of color with the very tip of the brush, and there's just a bit of paint on the brush. If you feel like you went too dark or applied too many textures, you could smooth things out with your slightly damp brush. That's what I'm doing here in the highlight shape. Things are appearing a little disjointed in the iris, and I think it's time for another glaze. And this eye is finished. And it looks really classy when placed inside a mat and frame. And if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'd love it if you'd share this video with your friends. If you'd like to try a course for free, I invite you to visit the school where you'll find even more resources to help you learn to paint realistic animals in watercolor. I hope you've enjoyed and learned from this course. Thanks for watching.